Hello everybody and uh, welcome to your 45th VBA 2010 tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to do uh, use option buttons or radio but buttons as they're commonly called. So again let us start a new user form, we'll say insert user form and go into our properties and we're just going to call this uh, quiz. And let's just put a caption, so question one. And I'm just going to show you quickly how you could kind of set up a multiple choice question. So let's put in a label and put in our question. So um, what is your favorite food? Probably going to be pie in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure I've already done a tutorial where I've gone off about pies but um, let's, let's leave that this time this time I'm just going to put in uh, some option buttons so um, this button here the option button uh, just comes up and then you have uh, these buttons that you're able to click on and off uh, if we open up our thing and you'll be able to see that once you click it you can it puts a little black dot in it and then that one's selected well you, you never want just one you want to have kind of a group of them so I'm gonna have four and then uh, we're just gonna have uh, the option button so you answer a say a pizza and then option B fish, very broad spectrum there, but uh, C, um, let's have burger, and option D, a salad. Um, very uninventive, um, let's spice it up a little bit then by just giving it a, a nice back colour, so I'm going to go for a bit of yellow today. Um, you notice that the labels and the other things haven't gone yellow, so let's just highlight all of them, make them yellow as well. Um, and let's just change our full colour to yellow as well, just to get rid of those dots. Um, it does, the dots don't show through on the actual user form, um, but I find them annoying when I'm designing it anyway. Um, and then let's just click on all of them as well, and just change the font to bold and size 10. To make it a bit bigger. Right, so this, the next thing we need to do is just make sure that their grouping is all, all together. So they all need to be groups as the same thing. So select all four of these and then come on here and then go to group name. And then you need to put a value in here for the group. If we press play at the moment, when we s select them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to know by default, but. Um, if we say uh, it's going to know by default because it's the only ones we've got so it's assuming that they're all in the same group but if we put them like this so group A and say we wanted the separate ones and we called these group B and press play and then these two are going to run independently of these two um, so when it was blank they were all grouped together because they were all blank but um, if you want two separate ones just remember to use that group name um, for some reason I thought it wouldn't do it if I didn't put any group name in but obviously I was wrong uh, group name so let's actually put them all back to group A I like to give things a group name anyway just in case at a later date I add on another one in there um, so let's press play now and just check that's working yep just stick a little button on there, say command button and let's just put a caption on it that says confirm answer stick that down on the bottom and then double click on that so now we want to um, take our answer from the 
user form. So we want to know which one of these is the true, um, is, is set to true. So let's just put in our, uh, we want to put dim answer as string. And then we, we want to go if, and then quiz dot option button one equals uh, dot value equals true, then else if quiz dot option button two dot value equals true, then make sure you do your else if correctly. Else if quiz dot option button three equals true, then else if quiz dot option button four equals true, then and then we just want a final else, which is what's going to run if it doesn't select anything. So please. Select an uh, answer. Let's put an exclamation mark on it and then let's actually make it a message box rather than just a string. Message box. Please select an answer. Right. So now it's going to test which one equals true and then depending on what it is, so if it's the first one, um, Let's just move this down here. Uh, get rid of our media window. So we want our answer to be equal to pizza. And the next one equals fish. Next one, answer equals burger. And the next one, answer equals salad. So at the end, let's put exit sub here so it doesn't carry on running. Then here it's only going to run if the answer's been filled in. So message box, you made a good choice or thank you for completing our survey. And then we could write in some code to um, store that piece of information on the spreadsheet. So let's just go into here and put answers. Um, and then let's make another loop. So dim counter as integer counter equals one. And then do until this workbook dot sheets answers dot cells counter count one dot value equals nothing. Counter equals counter plus one loop. So that's going to find the bottom of our, that's going to find the next empty space on that spreadsheet page. Uh, and then I just want to fill that in. So this workbook dot sheets. Oh, answers dot cells counter comma one dot value equals and then we just want to set it equal to answer um so then let's run our quiz let's just set ourselves up a module to actually do it so quiz dot show and let's actually put it in here 
uh, and let's close this down and press Alt F8 and run and I'm going to choose our answer so let's go for a burger thank you for completing the survey and then it puts it over there um, and we can do it as many times as we like and as you can see it will just keep adding it to the sheet um, so that is how you would use option buttons um, we can just close it off and then we've got our data stored in there so that is going to be it for this tutorial in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to um, use the checkboxes